Hey guys, I want to try something different with this class since we have such a large number and obviously what I'm trying to do is not working. So I'm going to go back to these PowerPoints to where I make the video and you can log into YouTube or wherever and listen to them at any time. Part of this we've already gone over. I just want to run back through it quickly and I will show you where the main content for today starts that I don't feel I did a good job teaching you. So we're talking about stems and we have learned that stems have important jobs. Stems hold a plant up. Stems can sometimes um, provide food. They can do photosynthesis. Stems support the leaves. They move water, minerals, and food throughout the whole plant. Stems also can store food that the plant has made. So we've talked about all of these and already taken notes on these. But just to kind of refresh your memory, I thought that I would run back through those two slides. Hopefully yesterday you understood fairly well from the activity where you went and picked up your twig the external parts of the stem. Most of you all were able to find the terminal bud or you can call it the apical meristem, the tip of the stem where you saw a little bud starting to grow. Um, it has the same type of structure that the tip of a root has. Hopefully you were able to see a node and the area between leaves called an internode. At the node, just above that, is called a side bud or a lateral bud. And then on the outside of both side and lateral buds are bud scales. Hopefully you were able to see that. You also found leaf scars, little bitty tiny raised bumps where leaves had fallen off. And then when the bud scales fall off in the spring, you might find a ring of scars called a bud scale scar. Here is the picture you all used and hopefully you were able to diagram your stem. Here's why I really wanted to kind of go back into detail. So here is where you will need to take some guided notes, okay? So what I want you to understand today is that I can't explain what the xylem and the phloem are and their jobs and I can explain heartwood and sapwood. So inside the stem of a plant, there's tissues that transport materials throughout the plant. And there's many ways that those tissues can be organized. The vascular tissues are either found in small bundles scattered throughout the stem or arranged in rings which are located in the cortex. Do you all remember when we discussed monocots and dicots and the stem was one of the ways you could distinguish between a monocot and a dicot. When the stems are scattered, as in down here in this picture, you have a monocot. See all those stems are just scattered, but notice in the dicot they occur in rings. There's three types of tissue inside the stem that I want you guys to be aware of. Today when we did the activity, most of you all had no trouble locating the pith I just love to say that word. But if you look straight down into the stem, you can see the center core is called the pith. Okay, here is a word that I really need you to be familiar with. Xylem. The xylem is the tissue that conducts water and minerals throughout the plant. It is made of tube-like cells that grow together to conduct liquid. Typically, xylem is found closer to the center of the stem. The growth and girth of the stem is the xylem. It's generally found between the xylem and the phloem. So, if you notice in this animation or in this cartoon drawing, the xylem conducts water and minerals up and down the plant and throughout all the leaves. Okay, the other term I need you guys to be familiar with is phloem. What it does, it transports food that's been made in the leaf with photosynthesis to the rest of the plant. Phloem cells can also form tubes 
and it's generally found towards the outside of the stem. So notice the arrows have the phloem transporting the food that has been made in the leaves, because we know that's where photosynthesis occurs, down to the stem or even down to the roots to store later. The tissue inside the stem that makes new xylem and phloem is called vascular cambium. What this is responsible for is the growth and girth or the width of the stem and generally it's between the xylem and the phloem. Now in the center of a tree, if you're looking down a tree trunk, that's considered the tree stem, you find the heartwood. The xylem cells of the heartwood have filled with gums, resins, pigments, and tannins. They provide strength and they no longer even conduct or transport materials at all. So the heartwood, if you are familiar with burning wood, the heartwood is the old hardwood, the dried wood that you would burn. Now, if you're going to fill up the stove to keep your house warm at night, if you put sapwood into your stove, you're going to have a sizzling, popping, crackling mess all night long. That is the lighter wood circling the heartwood. It actively conducts water and minerals. It has sap flowing throughout it, so it doesn't burn as well. So they're showing us here in this picture. There's the pith, the very center core. Here's the heartwood. Here's the sapwood. So the sapwood is the part of the tree that we might call green. And when you try to burn this, you've got a mess on your hands. But each one of these rings shows us the growth of a tree. And you can count those rings and determine how old a tree is. You can also determine if it was a good year or a bad year. So counting growth rings. During rapid growth, the cells of the wood are thin-walled and large in diameter. As that growth slows in mid to late summer, the wood cells produced by the cambium become smaller and have thicker walls. Each ring is the growth during one growing season, so each ring represents a year. I'm going to stop right there because this is the information that I didn't feel in looking back and reflecting I was very good at teaching you with. So I wanted to go back and hit several of these terms. Now you're going to do an activity later on where we are going to look at the growth of tree rings and some trees in the United States. And we're going to try to correlate what type of um, precipitation and climate and weather patterns we saw going on during that year. So go ahead. Um, you can stop your video now and uh, do your packet that I have given you.